welcome to Equine Science Talk, Understanding Equine Science. I'm Laureen. Hello, I'm Constanza. And I'm Isabel. Today we're talking about reinforcement and punishment. In general, all animals, including horses and humans, learn through so-called operant conditioning. They learn through the consequences of their behaviour and these consequences can take the form of reinforcement or punishment. Reinforcement means pleasant consequences of a behaviour by the horse that makes it more likely for this behaviour to be repeated in the future. Punishment means unpleasant consequences of a behaviour that now make it less likely that this behaviour will be repeated. What exactly do positive and negative mean in this context? We say positive when the reinforcement or punishment is in the form of something is added to influence the horse's behaviour and negative is when something is taken away. And what exactly do positive and negative mean in this context? Essentially it means adding something pleasant when the horse shows a particular behaviour so that this behaviour will be repeated. Let me illustrate this with an example from the natural setting. Here you can see two mares from the small horse breed Cavalli di Isperia that roam freely in the Italian mountains. The mares approach each other to engage in mutual grooming. This is a pleasant experience for both, so they are more likely to seek out each other's company again. And Isabel, how does this look in practice? A classic example of positive reinforcement is a carrot or any food treat. But you can also scratch a favourite spot, have a break in the training or all sorts of other things that would be seen as positive consequences by the horse. However, sometimes feeding a treat isn't possible or convenient or in the context wouldn't be recognised as a positive consequence. For example, if we're working at a distance, maybe lunging the horse, we can't really throw him a carrot, so it's up to us as riders to work out what the horse would find pleasant at that particular moment and what's practical for us to use as a motivation. It might be a break in the training or even something else that will show the horse that his behaviour was correct. Now let's explain positive punishment in more detail. Positive punishment means punishment by adding something. Here's an example from Horses in the Wild. Here are two stallions in conflict. The first stallion on the right, the one who is being bitten, is in fact the aggressor. He was pasturing the second stallion until the second one decided enough is enough and attacked back. In this way, he added something, his aggression, as a punishment for the one who had bitten him in the first place. And the same is that the initial aggression won't be repeated. How does this look in practice? Usually people think of whips and spurs when they think of punishment, but positive punishment can start with something as mild as a stronger use of the leg. It can simply be the next stage that's used if the horse doesn't respond correctly to the initial use of the leg, rein or even body language. When applying positive punishment, it's very important that it's applied in three consistent stages – the signal, the intensification and the enforcement. In this way, the horse must never suffer from positive punishment. The punishment simply makes it a little more uncomfortable as the pressure is increased. And it's imperative that the signal stops immediately the horse does the right thing, so that it understands that what it did was correct. If this sequence of an increasing intensity of signals and stopping immediately the correct behaviour is shown is followed consistently, the horse will learn and respond more and more quickly until only the lightest signal is needed to elicit the correct response. That's the goal of good training. That means we must take away the pressure at the right moment. Isn't that what we call negative reinforcement? Exactly. Negative reinforcement means the taking away of something unpleasant with the intention of making a behavior more likely to occur again in the future. Here is another example from natural behavior. Here we have a stallion and a foal. The foal has moved away from the group and the stallion wants to teach the foal that it should stay in the group. So it starts to increase pressure and threatens the foal until the foal returns to the group. As soon as the fall goes back, the stallion takes the pressure away and so the fall learns that in the future it should stay with the group. A great example. And how does this look in practice? 
Many riders call this negative reinforcement release, and it can be applied to a rein, leg or voice aid, as well as to body language or other cues. If we don't stop asking when the horse does the right thing, the horse will look for another way to stop that nagging leg or pulling rein, and then we get a horse that bolts or goes over the shoulder, or simply switches off and refuses to move at all, because it doesn't understand what's being asked of it. OK, then the last one is negative punishment. What does that mean exactly? Negative punishment means we create an unpleasant consequence to the horse's behavior by taking something away with the aim of making it less likely that this behavior will be repeated in the future. Again, I can best explain this with an example from natural behavior. Here we can see a group of horses and I would like to focus first on the bay mare. She's leaving the group. She had approached the gray mare and had been grooming with her. But then the grey mare bit her, so she distanced herself from the grey mare as a punishment and to make it clear that if she continues to bite, she won't be approached again. So the bay punished the grey by removing her presence. But in training, this isn't often applied, is it? No, it's not widely used, but I can think of a couple of examples. A foal has to learn to stand still when tied up and let itself be groomed. So here we have a foal that's learning this. The rope runs through the tie ring but's loose, so I can hold the end of it without tying a knot. I then groomed him, which he found very pleasant, especially as he was just changing his coat, so this was a positive reinforcement. Occasionally he started to step backwards, and that meant, of course, that the rope became tighter and there was pressure on the halter, and that constituted a positive punishment. Something unpleasant was added. When this happened, I stopped grooming and so took something away, and therefore created a negative punishment. The foal found all of this a little unpleasant, so eventually he decided to step forward again, so that the pressure on the halter was released, creating a negative reinforcement, and I started grooming him again, which he enjoyed. I had added something pleasant, and therefore created a positive reinforcement. This way the foal learned the correct behaviour in a very short time. This example illustrates how the four forms of learning work together and merge into each other. This example shows that you must always react appropriately. Isn't this the so-called timing? Yes. Timing means that the reaction to the horse's behavior must happen immediately, at best within three seconds. We know from scientific research that the horse's short-term memory span is probably around 10 seconds. The response to the horse's behavior must happen within this time frame. We see over and over in the natural setting that some horses, such as the stallion, have very, very good timing and others have very bad timing. Stallions with bad timing react only very slowly or with a delay when their mares or foals wander off from the group. And then the stallion has to use a lot of effort and energy to hurt his group. This stallion in the picture, however, starts to drive or threaten immediately he sees mares or foals beginning to leave the group and he only has to signal a threat. So in this case, lowering his hat and, hat and putting his ears back and the members of the group know straight away that they are supposed to go in a particular direction. Timing is important in practice too. Isabel, can you explain it please? Without correct timing, no training method is going to work. Therefore, it's essential to build a trusting and fair relationship with our horses. If the timing isn't right and the positive reinforcement comes at the wrong moment, at best the horse doesn't learn anything, and in the worst case it learns the wrong behaviour. There can also be serious consequences when positive punishment and negative reinforcement are applied at the wrong moment. With positive punishment, for example, if we give the aid too quickly or at too high an intensity, you might startle the horse and make it anxious and defensive. Also, false associations can be created if the positive punishment is given too late. For example, if a horse makes a mistake in the show ring and then it's punished later in the warm-up area, the horse can't make the connection between the mistake and the consequence. It won't understand the punishment in the warm-up area and will become tense and unsettled there in future. With negative reinforcement, if we don't stop asking when the horse is doing the right thing, in the worst case, over time, the horse will become dead to the aids and simply put up with the rider. This type of poor timing can result in so-called problem behaviour. Problem behaviour is caused when the horse can't find a way to stop the pressure or punishment and it turns to increased aggression in the form of bucking, rearing or napping.
This is essentially the horse's cry for help, because he doesn't understand what's being asked of him. He doesn't know how to escape from the pressure, or what he has to do to make it go away. So that means if we carry on and ignore the horse's cry for help, then it can become learned helplessness. Yes, horses who do not understand the connection between their behaviour and the following reinforcement or punishment become aggressive. And they try to defend themselves against everything happening around them. But we know from research that horses don't only become aggressive. If such a situation continues over time, and the horse can't make any connection between its action and the consequence, some horses become seriously depressed. They may become passive and no longer interact with the world around them, including their riders and handlers. And there are examples of this in practice? As I mentioned before, bad timing, especially of positive punishment or negative reinforcement, can make the horse dead to the aids or lead to problem behaviour, and too much pressure can lead to over-anxiousness. Bad timing and too much pressure also negatively impact on the horse's learning ability. This causes a vicious circle that eventually leads to learned helplessness. It sounds pretty awful, and you might think it would be better not to use any punishment at all, but that's not right either, because if a 500 kilo horse doesn't understand that there are rules about how to relate to people, the situation soon becomes dangerous, and if this happens, expert intervention is needed. Without the learning tools of positive and negative punishment, riders would have to wait until the horse shows the right behaviour of its own accord and then reward it. The question is not should we apply punishment, but rather how should we apply it so that the horse's welfare doesn't suffer. The best example of this, as Constanza has already said, is in the behaviour of horses towards each other. In the natural group, there are clear rules that make the horse feel safe, protected and secure. It's therefore our job when establishing the horse-human relationship to set clear rules that must be observed by both sides, the horse and the human, so that the horse feels safe, protected and secure. I think those words are a great way to end. We must strive to make the horse feel safe and secure. Thank you for watching and see you again soon.